As Australia hit the mid 80s, we were riding high. It started to look a lot like the paradise it had always promised to become. A spike in our economy gave a lot of people the time and money to experiment with new leisures and pastimes. We had a forward-thinking Prime Minister who still managed to be one of the boys. <laughs> and we were even feeling good-natured enough to find the time to give a giant bloody rock back to the people that it always belonged to in the first place. But mainly, we started to think differently about ourselves and started to look for more exciting cultural pastimes than those bequeathed upon us by the Queen. And that's a disappointing finish. Suddenly, we found ourselves with new American friends who had much grander ideas about fun than the Brits. G'day. Big down deep from Australia. How are you? That meant we adopted cars as part of our national identity. Australia, what's your favourite sport? Football. Snack. Ice. Animal. Kangaroo. And what's your favourite car, Australia? And not only cars, but fast cars. The quick ones. And above all, Especially we loved it when other people had fast cars. What a fucking sick cunt. And nothing captured our newfound horse-powered imagination like the dirty, roaring, spectacular American import of sprint car racing. Probably Gil Cameron, I think, driving his own car this time. That's Gil Cameron, my father. Help, I've got somebody in trouble! The two team cars together and crashed. <laughs> That's me. I spent my youngest years going racetrack to racetrack, pit to pit with my father. And while my path would veer dramatically from dirt track racing, the experience left an indelible mark on me. So now it's time to go beyond just the sensational footage of World of Outlaw Racing and discover what lies at the soul of the champions of the golden era of Australian sprint car racing. Over, over, Gil Cameron! Gil Cameron it is. Jockeying wheels together again. Oh, marching up and over, down! Uh, because there's nothing like the feeling of one of those cars, and when you're running, you know, wheel to wheel, you know, with with your opponent, it's not scary at all. It's, it's, I get more scared driving than the road. It's not scary, it just is, it's probably the most pure freedom you can get because there is no one when you're in that car that can tell you what to do. It's all up to you. And, and you see why people can go broke, lose everything by just not being able to stop. But, you know, people come to me and say, oh, I want to get my kid into racing, I want to get into racing. I say, well, yeah, well you're right. you've got to go to Heinley Street first. And I say, why is that? I said, you've got to go and find a drug dealer, buy a huge amount of cocaine. And they look at me, what? So you can't have a huge amount of cocaine. Why is that? Because it's, it's easy to get off that than it is to get off racing. And that's a fact. It really is. Because honestly, anybody can. You can, you can actually hire them nowadays um, to go and have laps in them. So it's different to racing one. Racing one is a lot different. Oh, March! March! Phil March! In trouble! In trouble! I haven't found anything to replace it, which is frustrating at my age. You still, you still feel the drag? I still love to go fast, yes. Um, I spent a week in, uh, bolted in a frame in Warrnambool Base Hospital and then my dad, once I could feel my feet, my dad got me out and they flew me home. It's a pain in the butt laying in the hospital. You know, I don't like hospitals, great deal, so. It's kids in there, we've got a sensation on the start finish line! Ah, oh, Gil Cameron! And what drove them to go out night after night and risk everything in the name of their calling? Oh, crash. 
If you're not winning oppression, you're not trying hard enough.